welcome back to Made to Flourish with your host, Ali Alamea, where we learn to blossom by faith and flourish within. I believe the Lord is calling us to rise up, take a stand, and flourish. To listen to this episode, grab some water, a cup of coffee, or tea, sit back, kick up your feet, relax, and enjoy this talk show. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. I'm so excited to share this new episode with you guys and thank you for your patience in me releasing this new episode. It's been a minute, but I'm glad to be back and sharing this with you guys. So let's get to it and dive right in. Today I want to talk about performance and I really want to put an emphasis on it's not about performance because I think When we're walking with the Lord, we can get really lost in the act of doing and serving and coming up with a list, a checklist, and trying to check off the boxes. And I feel like we do that not intentionally, but sometimes it could be subconscious and then it becomes something that we strive to do and something that we kind of have a routine and continue to do. But I want to bring this up so that way we can check our hearts and be sure that we are not operating or walking in performance because we want to do everything out of love and a servant heart and honoring the Lord, not to people please or to kind of gain a title or gain position or gain anything really because we already have all that we need in Christ and the way that we serve and walk and love others is because we've been loved and forgiven so we want to extend that as well, right? I don't know if you guys know this song called The Blood. It's one of my favorite songs in this season and I really want to share the lyrics with you. So it starts off by saying, Everything changed. It's getting harder to recognize the person I was before I encountered Christ. I don't walk like I used to. I don't talk like I used to. I've been washed from the inside. I've been washed from the inside out. And then it goes, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it was the blood. It could have only been the blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. (laughs) Sorry. That was pretty funny. It's because the way they sing it, it just, I said it weird. So anyway, I know it was the blood. It could have only been the blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it was the blood. It could have only been the blood. And then it goes into the second verse and it says, I cannot explain, but nothing's more real than this. In the presence of God, oh, what my heart experienced. When my shame hit the wayside and my sin met the most high, I was washed from the inside. I was washed from the inside out. And then it goes into the chorus again that says, Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it was the blood. It could have only been the blood. And then going down to the bridge, which is my favorite part, and it says, It's never been about performance, perfection, or striving for acceptance. Let me tell you, it's only by the blood. It's never been about deserving or earning. It's a gift that's freely given. Let me tell you, it's only by the blood. Does anybody want to be holy, righteous, purified, and spotless? Let me tell you, it's only by the blood. Does anybody want to be worthy, forgiven, justified, really living? Let me tell you, it's only by the blood. So when we listen to these lyrics, we can remember and know that only because of the blood of Jesus, his bloodshed on the cross, is how we have these things. The redemption, the love, the joy, and all these things that I was saying here where we talk about it not being about performance or perfection or striving for acceptance, we should be able to really humbly approach the Lord and ask Him to help us see with His eyes. And in the performance aspect, just asking the Lord, what ways can we serve? What ways can we really honor you and not just show up because someone's asking of me to show up or not just show up because I want to check the box on attendance for church or people are expecting me to go to church, but really am I called to go to this church or am I called to be a part of this community and asking the Lord, okay, can you help me walk through this? Because I don't want to be a person that just bases my life off performance to please the people around me, but really not honoring 
you, God, you know, when we're talking to God, but just really having that heart posture and asking ourselves, am I honoring the Lord today in this decision? And I love how it says it's never been about perfection because sometimes we try to wrap our heads around trying to be a perfectionist and having things exactly the way they, we think they should be to a T. And if it's not that way, we give up or we don't try again or we say, maybe this won't work for us or maybe we should try something different. But really, it's all about just stepping out in courage and in risk taking. I love that word risk because sometimes we have to be super uncomfortable before we find what the Lord is calling us to do because He's he is perfection. We are not. So we cannot step out and do something perfect on the first try or the first day because it's just not possible. We have to try and we might make a mistake and we might not find the correct community right away or we might fail in our books, but I I consider it more of like a mistake because you keep trying and trying and then you get better and you practice and then you're able to find what the Lord is leading you to do but also being able to find that peace in the midst of messing up or making a mistake and falling and then being able to get back up. But I love the next part where it says it's not about striving for acceptance because as children of God, we are already accepted. We don't have to strive for approval or for love or anything because we are already loved. So I think sometimes we can get in this habit of being involved in every single ministry or every single platform that we can and just trying to make a name for ourselves or prove a point of I can do this and I'm good at this but really is that what we're supposed to do and for an example maybe you feel led to join the worship team but then you feel like you should join the serve team or the production team as well and then after a while it gets super overwhelming because you have every single day and every single week that you're preparing studying trying to learn and help out and then at one point you just realize you're saying yes to people because they put you on a schedule and then you're not really fully present because Maybe you don't want to be there or maybe you can't be there, but if you were to work on one ministry, let's say if it's worship or production or serve team, whatever it is, then you have like weeks where you can go and weeks where you can't, but on the other weeks, you're able to connect with people and serve people, not in like the title, but just like building those relationships and connections. I hope that makes sense. It's just like, For striving for acceptance, I feel like sometimes we build a role or try to fulfill a role that isn't even asked of us um, by the Lord, but we are trying to make sure that we're noticeable, you know, make sure that we're noticed or that we can be a part of something. And I feel like this is so important to check our hearts because if we're striving for that acceptance, it just brings burnout because we're constantly running on empty, constantly running on like just trying to prove ourselves is the only way I can think of it. But I feel like this is such a good prayer point. Like it's not about that. And I think earlier this year, the Lord really highlighted the word acceptance for me and it completely transformed my life because I was one person that was like, oh, I need to do this a certain way. I need to do that a certain way so I could be involved in ministry or I can be involved in a group and God really checked my heart and said hey like do you know that you're already accepted even if you didn't do any of that even if you didn't show up even if you slept in and you were late or you didn't go there like I still love you I still treasure you I still want to honor you I still want to give you a good life, the abundant life, but from that place of being accepted, you're able to serve and you're able to learn and work together with a team and do the things that you want to, but it won't be a task, it won't be forced, it won't be like an obligation, but it would come out from the overflow, from a place where 
you would be able to find joy while serving. And I love that because serving the Lord should be joyful. It shouldn't be a chore or something we feel like we have to do to be accepted into the community of God, into the kingdom of God. But once we are accepted or like we we believe and grasp it with our mind and our heart fully, we're able to actually live a life of servanthood and have that servant heart and wanting to be involved in different ministries. And I think we also have the ability to say no and understand when we are capable of doing it and when we're not because we have those boundaries and we also have the ability to just see what we need while honoring the Lord and not being selfish or fleshly. So then we go to the next part where it says, let me tell you, it's only by the blood. So only by the blood of Jesus, we can be perfected in the image of Christ. And only by the blood of Jesus, we are accepted from the Lord. And only by the blood of Jesus, we don't have to perform, but from the overflow, we're able to serve and minister and walk with others. Then we jump into, it's never been about deserving or earning. It's a gift that's freely given. And how many times do we try to deserve it, you know? Like, Jesus died on the cross simply because he loves us and he desires relationship with us. Because of sin, we don't deserve that. But he saw us and he loved us and decided to do that so we could have relationship with God again. And we don't even have to earn it. Like, it's a gift. It's literally given to us. All we have to do is accept it, acknowledge it, believe it, and receive it. And turn away from our ways, like turn away from the lifestyle that we live that isn't living according to the word of God and being able to accept who he called us to be. Like, we don't have to earn it, but all we have to do is surrender and submit. And then we have the gift that's freely given only by the blood, (laughs) which is the next thing. It says it's only by the blood. And then it asks, does anybody want to be holy and righteous, purified and spotless? I don't know about you, but that is my like number one prayer where I definitely want to be holy and righteous. And I think that it's beautiful that Jesus promises that, or God says that he views us as Jesus. So before the Lord, we are in right standing with God. So we are righteous. We can be righteous and holy because those are the characteristics of Jesus. But we really have to look at Jesus and gaze upon his beauty so that we can embody his characteristics and be able to have that title of holy. Not in a way that we're like, oh, holier than thou, or I'm holy, look at me, but no, like that awe and wonder of Father God and being able to have that reverence where we're like fearing the Lord in a healthy way, not like scared, but like an honoring fear. So then we become righteous and we're able to be purified and spotless just like Jesus was. So when we accept Jesus in our heart, And when we gaze upon his beauty and when we look to him, we are now spotless and purified. (laughs) Like, I know I said this already, but I don't know about you, but I really want to be purified and spotless. Like, I pray for that all the time and I want to encourage you too. If you haven't been praying about that, maybe this is your sign to continue to pray for that or to start praying for that because God wants us to be purified. And what does that mean? That means like we can be pure in our heart so that our desires become pure and not like the world. And sometimes that takes a while, so no condemnation there, but just really purifying our mind as well, our thoughts, our processes, like the way that we process things, our desires, our like like when we wake up or when we're going to bed, like are we thinking of heavenly things or are we thinking of toxic things or or things that we were watching and listening to throughout the day. Like we want our mind to be purified and spotless, not stained by the world, not filled with darkness, not filled with confusion. So this is literally possible by the blood of Jesus. And it just gets me so hyped, so happy, so like joyful because he 
promises. Like he already has given us the blood. And then the next one, it says, does anybody want to be worthy, forgiven, justified, and really living? And this hit me so hard because we are made worthy through the blood of Jesus and we are also forgiven. And forgiven has been a huge word for me in this season because sometimes we listen to that verse that says, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. And then Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. And if you do the math, that is 490 times. So can you imagine forgiving somebody 490 times in one day? I feel like God does such a good time or (laughs) just leaving that little blooper in there. But Jesus does such a good job with showing us that There is so much room for forgiveness and sometimes we don't even realize it because I don't know about you, but I literally can't imagine having to forgive somebody 490 times in one day. So the fact that that is even a thing makes it seem like, okay, forgiveness is endless. Even if a person continues to hurt us and bother us and and like not hold up to what Christ's Christ standard is, we should be able to forgive them. I mean, depending if they're a believer or not, of course, somebody has to be biblical or follow the Bible, but we shouldn't be like, hey, do this because you're a Christ follower, but we should be able to extend that forgiveness and grace, which compels people to change and compels people to want to gaze upon the Lord and want him to change us, you know, because if we're out here telling people, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that, like sometimes people will begin to argue and get more offended, which we do talk about not having an offendable heart, but if we're really in love with Jesus, I feel like we have to step out in kindness and love so much more than we actually do. And I could be the first to say that because sometimes I can get irritated with certain people and the Lord has checked my heart recently and shown me like, hey, I was able to be kind to people when they spit in my face. I was able to be loving to people when they blatantly were rude to me and disrespected me. And not that I feel like Jesus is saying you have to do it, but I love the way he speaks to me in the fact that like when I get corrected that way or when I notice my fault or my shortcoming, I'm able to realize, oh wow, I don't actually want to respond that way. I don't actually want to to show up that way or to have that type of character because it's not nice and it's icky or nasty and like I don't want to be perceived as a rude person and let alone like perception but I also feel like I don't want to have that type of character because that's not God's character. He's gentle and he's kind and respectful so we should be able to live that out but we also have to start with forgiveness too. And a big thing of that is knowing that we are forgiven already. In Christ, of course, if we receive him and accept him. And then we can go on to the part where it says, does anybody want to be justified and really living? And I love the part where it asks the question of, does anybody want to be really living? And I think there is so much to talk about this. Um, One aspect of it is sanctification. And I think when we first become believers, it is a process and there's so much unlearning and learning of what the true gospel is and how to reflect Christ and how to reflect the image of God. But I think as the time goes by, we can actually feel like we are alive. And I don't know about your guys' story, but in my life, before I met Christ at the age of 14, I felt dead. Like I felt completely dead, just no purpose, no life, no direction, no vision at all. And and as I was following the Lord and discovering my identity, little by little I was able to see, okay, I have a reason to live. But it took a while. 
And I feel like Jesus renewing our mind and as we read the word and let it come to life, we can actually have this confidence to say that we are really living and I know I've mentioned this before about the abundant life and all of that that's something I love to talk about coming from a person that literally felt like a zombie like just a space taking up on this earth but the Lord restores that and he really gives us a purpose a plan and we can actually feel like we are really living but again this is only by the blood of Jesus and I talked a little bit about saying sanctification. And just in case someone doesn't know what that means, that is the action of making or declaring something holy. So it's the process of our relationship with God, growing with him and being transformed into the image of God where we become holy like him because we begin to behold him and look at him and then we transform into the image of God, being able to bear his image and reflect Christ's image. And truly, we can only do this by the blood of Jesus. So thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you that it spilled over for us so that we can declare your blood over our lives and just really become holy step by step. Something I heard today which really blew my mind is that Jesus didn't come to die for our sins, but he died because of our sins and he died for us. So he died for you, he died for me, he died for this whole world because of sin. So he was able to deal with all of sin and because he died for us, we are able to have that relationship with God, the Father, through our relationship with Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Like, I seriously, ugh, it just makes me jump with joy and just like blows my mind because I am so thankful that I no longer have to be trapped by sin or like held up to the standard of sinful, you know, because the Lord brings redemption and Jesus offers that redemption. And how crazy that when we accept Jesus in our heart, that literally God looks at us as Jesus and all of those stains, all of the sin is wiped away and we are spotless before him. So going back to the phrase and theme of this podcast is it's not about performance and I wanted to share a little story about that because I think it's so easy to get caught up in performance and maybe this will help highlight something or remind you of something in your life where you can identify a time where you might have been serving out of performance or out of approval of man instead of the approval of God. And I can raise my hand and be the first one to say this happened in my life and I was totally blind to it. So don't feel bad if this is you right now and don't feel bad if you have experienced this before. And and I can encourage you to share your story, share your testimony because it will help others see and realize that they're not alone. So jumping into my story is a few years ago I was doing Bible college in seminary with a bunch of friends and in Florida and we actually had to pick a ministry where we wanted to serve and I've always loved to worship so I chose worship and then we had different areas like I mentioned before at the church that I had I actually used the examples Uh, We had a serve team and we also had production and I really wanted to learn production so I joined that as well and then as a serve team we would be like greeters, welcomers, setting things up, setting the table, the guest table up, where the new people that have visited the church that day come in and you know you just give them a gift, pray for them, write um, their name on a card, things like that. But it was like a year one and a half, I think, where I was going, and I love people. I'm pretty outgoing um, off the bat. I mean, I like to say I'm an outgoing introvert because I do need my time alone. But anyway, um, I just started realizing that there was something missing, that I 
just didn't really know how to smile at a person and introduce myself or or welcome them. I felt like, yes, it looked like that on the outside, but inside I realized like there wasn't something that was not there. Like that joy that I longed for, that joy that I had, that I desired, that I wanted to express, it was like pretty fake. And I was in my prayer time with the Lord and I'm like, God, I don't know how much more of this I can do because if I'm going to do ministry and I'm going to serve you and walk with you, like I cannot be fake in front of people that don't know you or people that are having a hard day or people that literally have come to church as their last option. Like I need to be able to be full of the spirit, full of the desire to serve and be present and love these people that are so desperate to be loved because maybe they haven't encountered you before God. Maybe they don't even know what it's like to feel your presence because they haven't. So the Lord hardcore checked my heart and I just felt like he started stirring my heart to pray, to learn how to serve without gaining anything in return. Because in my mind, I was thinking, okay, I have to serve because I need to be right with God so that I could check off the box and see, okay, I did this today so like God's happy with me or I serve today so I'm I'm okay with God today and like I did the Bible reading today so God God loves me today. And it just was this whole messed up thing in my mind because first of all, I was taught that in a different church that you had to do, 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 and everything was like work-based and performance-based. So renewing that mindset took a long time. So it was at the point of burnout where that was my default. And I was like, no, I have to go to church. I have to show up. I have to be there so people don't judge me, so people think and know that I'm okay. And it was a whole mess, but I realized God was like, I want to teach you what it looks like to serve without gaining anything in return, what it looks like to genuinely love my people and to serve in a way that like even if you got nothing in return, you would still be happy, you would still be joyful serving and loving and showing up because you have already received everything. You have already gained everything in me. That love, security, firm foundation, joy, peace, All the things that I provide, I feel like God was saying to me, you have that, so you need to learn to be able to love from that overflow instead of loving to gain something or serving to gain something like that approval or position or title. And I began to just literally go crazy in my mind because I'm like, I don't care about a title. I don't care about a position. I don't care about being able to be recognized. But why is this so pressing on my heart? Why is it that the people around me or so many people talk about having a group of people that you can mentor or disciple and that's like the end goal? Which of course, I love discipleship. I love to be able to be a mentor, someone that looks like people look up to and it pushes me to read the word more. It pushes me to be diligent in seeking the Lord. But in that time of my life, I was not able to do that and I really had to take a step back and I asked the Lord, okay, God, where do you want me right now? Where, what position do you want me to serve and how can I do it in a way that honors you? Because I don't want to just do it to check off the box, but that was really hard for me. Um, so we took a while to pray and just ask the Lord. And this was before I went to Hawaii, but I think God told me that he wanted to take me to Hawaii to teach me what it looks like to serve without gaining anything in return. And for me, I started working when I was 14 years old as well. So I started basically providing for myself everything that I got and needed, like I would pay for it myself. And that was just how I lived. So going to Hawaii was a huge, huge step for me. I was 19, no, actually, I was 21, so that was like from 14 to 21, that was the first time I stopped working, 
in that many years. So that was huge. And at first I just thought I was going to go for three months, but that was the big step of faith where I literally leaped out of my comfort zone. But that was awesome. So when I went, it was just really crazy. The Lord taught me exactly that. He taught me what it looks like to serve without gaining anything. So when I went, actually, I had my room and board covered, but I was working a 40-hour week without getting a paycheck. And some of you might think that's crazy. Some of you might think that's awesome because, yay, room and board covered. But for me, at first, it was a little challenging only because I didn't know where my income was going to come from. I didn't know where I was, like, when I was going to go back to work or anything like that. But I hoped three months later, of course. So, I enjoyed it. I served. I loved it. I was able to help the campus where we were living at. And I ended up baking. And I was baking, like, a thousand muffins, a thousand cookies a day for the whole campus. It's a big university campus. And I had a blast. And also, it was the most fulfilling work that I ever had up until that point because I was finding joy in the Lord and I knew that I was serving the Lord and not like doing this to gain something in return and exactly what God told me happened where I could learn and I did learn what it looks like to serve without gaining something in return and then it shifted my heart and my perspective to be able to serve without desiring something in return or without perceiving or expecting something in return and I think that is the most beautiful thing because when we do serve others sometimes we are blessed first by their fruitfulness and the way that they grow but also like some people like to bless us but that should not be our expectation and that expectation literally was stripped down to the bone it was gone like disintegrated which I'm so thankful for but I had to go through that process to really see like okay God what am I living for what am I doing like I'm working I'm serving I'm loving I'm not gaining anything but I feel so joyful I'm gaining more time with you I'm gaining more security in you and my identity in Christ just grew so much because I didn't have all this noise around me, all this confusion, all this drive and striving for for more money because before that I worked at a sales company and it was actually really amazing but I did kind of get addicted to working. I was like, okay, I'll work longer hours. I'll work more because I can get a bonus. I can work overtime. I can get more money and make more sales in that way. That's that's even more income. And I was able to actually take a step back and rest and see, okay, I can only work a 40-hour week. It's volunteer, but it's also so much more fulfilling and I'm learning what to do in my other time to honor the Lord and to serve Him and to read my Bible, but also learning that life shouldn't be super rushed and it shouldn't be super crazy. Sometimes we are distracted by the busyness and I'm guilty for that. I was definitely way too busy for what I should have been and it was 100% a distraction. So anyway, the Lord wants to teach us how we can serve without desiring something in return or without seeking and searching for gain because we already have all that we need in Christ and he provides the rest for us. He takes care of it. So I want to read a verse in Galatians 5 13. It says, for you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So when we have this freedom in Christ, we should be able to look to Christ and honor him and love our brothers and sisters and serve each other and not look at, hey, I'm going to do this for you because I expect you to do this for me or, hey, I'm going to do this for you because you already did this for me. No, but that desire to serve should come from a place of, hey, I see you need help and I want to be present and I want to love you and I want to serve you and I want to sit with you and hear you and help you with whatever it is you need and not expecting that favor in return. And I think that's so healthy for our hearts because sometimes things do come back to us like, 
other people bless us and stuff like that. But when we aren't expecting that, it's more like a surprise and it really helps us just serve with a genuine heart and not seeing what can we gain or what can we like receive from this, but really just turning that back to the servant heart of like, I'm doing this because I love this person and I want them to feel special and feel like a burden is lifted off so that I can just serve them, you know? And then we have the next verse 14 that says, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then verse 15, But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. And I really like this verse because it shows that if we are fighting with one another or trying to do something to hurt someone else or get revenge or walk in bitterness which devours the other person or like stomps them down or makes them less then we will be consumed by those actions and we won't be able to actually love someone because we're trying to find a way to destroy the other person and when we walk in that that is such a road to destruction and it leads to so much more of that it's not just like one time but then we gain that mindset of like I want to destroy everyone around me and that is totally not godly totally not a kingdom mindset and sometimes it happens so subconscious so I feel like we really have to do a good job with searching our hearts like are we wanting to celebrate our brother or our sister in Christ or are we excited when they fall are we celebrating when they make a mistake and not getting that promotion or excelling in the place that they have been desiring to excel or can we sit with them and mourn with them and pray with them and ask them how we can serve them and help them find that joy again or how we can make life a little bit easier for them so it doesn't feel like they're beat down and just under the weather all the time. I guess weather would be like being sick, but you know what I mean. Yeah, um, yeah so we have to be loving and just um, supportive to our brother and sister in Christ. Then there's this next section, which we're still in Galatians 5, and this is verse 16, but the title of this section says, Keep in step with the Spirit, and I love it because the verse says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And I think that in this topic of not being about performance, we really have to identify what we are doing to gratify the flesh and what we are doing to honor and submit and surrender to the Lord because it is so easy to gratify our flesh. Our flesh is pulling, it's enticing, it's deciding to like blend in with the world and wanting the easy way out and sometimes it's really loud and it's really tempting and deceiving and I think we really really have to do a diligent job in praying against deception because some things can be so easy to get um, distracted by or deceived by because a lot of things look really good and really light and just nice but it could be like they say an angel of darkness disguised in light. And we want to be really aware to not fall into those traps um, of gratifying our flesh or even having any open door, which is just like, oh, let me do this right now and it will be okay because it's not too big. But it always starts small. So I encourage you guys to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you walk by the Spirit so we won't step in the path of gratifying our flesh (laughs) and then okay verse 17 it says for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do So when we walk by the Spirit, we are able to deny the things of the flesh. And when we are a little bit off and we are not walking by the Spirit, it's so much easier to say yes to the things of the flesh or to blend into culture or to blend into the things of this world because 
we don't have that conviction of the Holy Spirit saying, no, this isn't right, or I don't think I should be a part of this, or I don't think I should go to this event, or I don't think I should hang around these people because we are more blended into the world, you know? So when we are seeking the Lord and submitting our spirit to the Holy Spirit, we are able to discern and we're able to realize that we don't want the things of the flesh. And honestly, it's very, very easy to fall into the things of the flesh. And I love the point where it says, the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. And here it's talking about things that we would want to do in God, the good things to honor the Lord. But when this sinful nature is like working directly in opposition with our spiritual way, then there is a continual conflict and it's really hard to do those good things. But when we submit to the Spirit and we ask Jesus to guide us and to lead us and for the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, we are able to get away from this sinful way that is trying to take over and confuse us and tempt us but it's so beautiful because we have the ability to submit to the spirit and the spirit will guide us and lead us and it's just as simple as that declaring the blood of jesus over our mind and asking the holy spirit to take over and guide us and then we're able to submit and honor the lord and walk in righteousness and walk in purity and continue being spotless before the lord and just as an encouragement if there is a time when you do fall and you have sinned all you have to do is repent and go to the lord and declare the blood of jesus over you and turn away from your sin turn away from the things that you've done that separated you from god and that didn't please god's heart and ask for the blood of jesus to purify your heart so that you could be justified before the lord and that way you could walk in the spirit once again and then verse 18 but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law verse 19 now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy fits of anger rivalries dissensions divisions envy drunkenness orgies and things like this i warn you as i warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of god so if I know this is a big list, but if you identify with any of these, I just want to encourage you to be able to go before the presence of God and repent and ask him to lead you to a place where you can see that this is something that isn't pleasing his heart. And no judgment, no condemnation, but literally God is just wanting to purify our hearts and he wants us to be pure before him and he helps us and he allows us to come to him and be honest with him so we we have the choice and i think that this is an amazing time to extend that opportunity for you to go before the lord and ask him to to wipe those things away to restore your purity to help you turn away and run from these things and and be accepted into the kingdom of god because at the end it says such things will not inherit the kingdom of god and if we are seeking the kingdom of God, we want to run away from these things. We want to ask the Lord to place his hand into our heart and remove all of these things from the deepest roots. And there's so many of these things that sometimes pop up in my life. And I really have to ask the Lord to, to forgive me and, and redeem me because there's no one that is holier of thou. Like anybody is capable of falling into any of these literally so i think we just have to do a heart check every so often and ask the lord like to really wash us with the blood by the blood of jesus to restore us redeem us because i want the kingdom of god so i don't know if you do but that would be the prayer to do if you're looking to receive the kingdom of god or wanting to step in 
in line with the word of god and receive the fullness of him and the fullness of life the fullness of the kingdom and, and it's a process so i wouldn't say to and discount yourself if you're struggling with these things but reach out to a mentor reach out to someone you trust and and ask them for help and ask them to help you walk through these things and be honest first honest with god honest with yourself and also with your leadership so that they would be able to walk with you and now one of my favorite verses will go into verse 22 where it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control and against such things there is no law so i love these points because this is what we are supposed to embody as a believer in christ we're supposed to be able to embody the pureness of love that agape unconditional love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and something about me starting to pray this earlier in 2023 i would pray it like every morning before the day i realized there's some of these that are a lot more amplified in my life and I was asking the Lord to really balance it because it does say that these are the fruit of the Spirit. So in Christ, in God, we are promised to be able to embody all of these. And of course, like I said earlier, there's that sanctification process. So if you are not having all of these as a fruit of the Spirit, don't worry because if you pray for it, they will come. And I think that the Lord really walks us through uh, process and we can't embody these right away right when we become a believer and sometimes we take longer to learn how to walk these out and how to live them out so I would suggest you writing them down and taking the time to pray and asking the Lord and just being honest and telling him I receive your love. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I receive your patience. I receive your kindness. I receive your goodness. I receive faithfulness and I receive gentleness and I receive self-control. And ask the Holy Spirit to show you when these things aren't being reflected in our day-to-day -day life. And that way, in the moment when we are walking out in harshness, we could pause and ask the Lord, Jesus, I receive your gentleness. I receive your gentleness and just being able to take a step back and walk that out because it's a um, go and learn type thing. You know, when we make a mistake or don't actually live it out, we have the opportunity to repent or we have the opportunity to turn around and be the same and walk in the opposite of these things. So, I feel like God is really wanting to extend the opportunity to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. And for me in this season, the biggest one that has been highlighted is gentleness and self-control. I think gentleness has been something that has been on my heart for a few months and I feel like I wanted to be able to do that even in the high intense moments where it would be easier for me to get angry or lose control of my temper or um, just kind of respond in a harsh way but I just feel and literally in the moments where I'm about to I just feel Holy Spirit kind of hold my tongue and I'm just like okay take a deep breath and I can respond in a way that's more gentle than I've ever experienced before and I, I'm not saying that I'm a super harsh person, but there are moments where things would affect me in a way where I may have a harsh tone or I may not have as much patience. And I'm noticing like I'm explaining self-control and patience kind of with gentleness, but they all kind of go together <laughs> if you see. But everyone can tell you that joy is my number one, <laughs> but I don't want to just be a joyful person. I, I love joy and I do enjoy being able to share that with others but i also want to be able to have the rest of these characteristics i don't want to just stop at that you know so if there's one or two that have been highlighted to you where you know you are walking that out because these are the like ones that jesus has gifted you with and then ask him to highlight the ones that are the most challenging. And I would love to hear that. So comment below and let me know which one will you be praying for more in this season and asking the Lord to help you 
walk in because there's always a place where we can grow and I know that people always make a joke of don't pray for patience because then God will give you hard things but I think it's those moments where we can really be sharpened and stripped to like bare bone where the Lord can actually have full reign in our lives and he could show us how to live a life that honors him and that respects and loves others. And after all, don't we want to love people like Jesus loves them? I mean, that's a gift and a skill. So we really have to look at Jesus and really grasp his heart for people to love them well. And the next verse is verse 24 that says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And 25, If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. 26, Let us not be conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So I think this just goes to show how much we are supposed to be laying down our desires and crucifying our flesh and our passions and our desires because once we surrender it to Christ and we really just lay down our fleshly desires, he is able to take over and really help us learn how to live a life that honors him, that loves our neighbor, loves ourself, and also serves our neighbor and serves the people around us, people that we might not even want to be around, but that we really need to receive the heart of God to love them. And I think it transforms the way that we perceive and relate to people because the gospel is all about relationships. It's all about loving our brother, extending a hand to our brother, our sister, and anybody really that is in need. We have to see how can we love them the way that Jesus would. And then it talks about if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. So we are actually able to walk in guidance with the Holy Spirit as the spirit steps, we can step and we can honor and serve in a way that really touches people's heart. Because with the Holy Spirit, that is God's omnipresence. So he is able to be present everywhere and anywhere, knowing what a person needs, knowing what we think, knowing what we need, and hearing our thoughts and helping us feel comforted and loved and safe and secure and the presence of God, you know? So if we are walking with the Spirit, we're able to know the things of the Spirit to best serve a person, what the person needs without the person even saying anything, which is incredible, just mind-blowing, and I love that so much. And then after it says, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. I love the part where it says provoking one another because I think in today's culture we talk a lot about sarcasm and we provoke people for fun, tease people for fun and I guess teasing is is okay because you know you're joking but like with the provoking that's such a like a heavy word and it's a, a good one to be aware of because we don't want to be like I just think of someone like taking a stick and like poking someone trying to bother them and mess with them and if it's a joke okay but like if you're literally provoking someone because you're trying to get them angry I feel like that just here in the word it says that is not god godly that is not christ-like so we shouldn't be provoking one another or envying one another I think that could be really hard when we find our acceptance or approval in someone else's opinion or when you talk about people pleasing, when we're looking for significance in someone else's words of affirmation or trying to praise us, you know, when we're looking for praise outside of the Lord. It's really difficult and we really have to check our hearts. So I'm really glad you guys listened to this podcast and I hope it spoke to you guys. I really want to uh, share this one last verse in Matthew 20, 28. It says, even as the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And as we read this and ponder on this, we should remember that even Jesus came to serve and he was not expecting people to serve him, but he went down and he actually served the people that nobody would have considered serving, that nobody saw value in. He saw value in them and he washed his disciples' feet and he sat with the people that others rejected. So as I'm sharing this and 
you are listening to this, I just want to encourage you to find somebody that God has been highlighting in your life that might be challenging to be around, but I bet you that the Lord wants to use that person to sharpen your skills, to help you see that you can actually be more compassionate than you think, and that you can be kind to a person that might really need a little bit of extra love. So, the rest of that verse says that he did not come to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So, God, I mean, Jesus was so quick to lay down his life for people, to take off his hat and really get down and just get in the dirt with people. And I feel like that is such a good example of how we should be as Christ followers and believers. We should be able to get down in the nitty gritty, in the trenches, in the valleys, in the hardest places with people that we know are struggling and needing that help. That we shouldn't be too busy to take a phone call in the middle of the night or too busy to check up on someone that we haven't seen in a while or check up on someone that might have went through a big heartbreak, might have lost a parent and lost a loved one, going through a hard time. We should be quick to serve and to love and to be present and to be there for people that really need us, not just serving in a position to gain a title or gain significance to the world or to the outside world world, I guess, or even in the church, like, I think we're so quick to be like, oh, who's a new pastor? Who's a new discipler? Who's a new mentor? But, like, what about the lost sheep? What about the sheep that are coming in or the people that are coming in that are so desperate for a hug, so desperate for just a smile, a genuine conversation instead of like, hi, how are you? And then moving on to something else and caring about the people that we already know all about their lives or we can see them and hang out with them throughout the week but the people that walk in through the doors that are so desperate to be loved so desperate to be seen and won't even ask for it because that love is nothing they've ever known nothing they've ever experienced so they need that consistent like check up on them or making sure they're okay or just helping them know that they're seen and loved and welcomed and chosen and just special you know because all people are so special and sometimes we forget to acknowledge the love that we have in us that literally is dying to pour out it's like wanting to pour out and spill over to the people around us and sometimes we can be selfish sometimes we can hold it in and we're just talking to our friends that we talk to all the time or spending time with people that we we know are saved and know are in the kingdom which is good for our souls as well we have to sharpen ourselves but I just want to challenge you and ask you the question, like, when was the last time you spoke with someone that doesn't know the gospel, that doesn't know Christ, or spent time with someone that is totally broken and that they literally are so new to this whole like God thing that they need to be discipled and do a Bible study or read a Bible plan or even learn like the basic things of faith. I feel like that is just so important to have in the forefront of our mind. Like, who out there are we passing by and walking by that might have never, ever heard of Jesus, doesn't even know what love is, doesn't even know what kindness is, and we just really have to be willing to extend that hand and go the extra mile. So, that's my challenge for you this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful day.